So Joe Biden has announced that he is directing the U.S. military to build a pier or a port off of the coast of Gaza in order to deliver humanitarian aid to the Palestinians. Seems like there would be easier ways to do this than take the time to build a pier or a port. But what is the actual the, the motive of doing this? I think there are some ulterior motives for doing this uh, other than just, oh, we want to be humanitarian and we want to actually deliver aid. I mean, one way to do it, it would be to demand that Israel actually open up and allow trucks to go in with aid. Uh, that seems to be the easiest thing. There's already access to Gaza. It's not like you really need to do this, build a pier or a port in order to get in. There's plenty of ways to get in. But instead, the United States has been bypassing the Israelis, now airdropping a bunch of aid, as you can see here on the screen, uh, airdropping tons of, of food using parachutes. Parachutes that, one of them failed and actually dropped a payload of food onto a group of people that were starving, trying to get this food. Two of them, children, were crushed under the food payload that dropped. Um, so not, you know, just killed by food, trying to get food. I mean, this is just what an absolute disaster. So Joe Biden announced during his State of the Union address that uh, he wants to build this port and allow food in. It just seems like talk to the Israeli here. Just listen to this and then we'll go over what I think the actual motivation is and the danger of this. I've been working nonstop to establish an immediate ceasefire that would last for six weeks to get all the prisoners released, all the hostages released to get the hostages home and ease the intolerable and humanitarian crisis and build toward an enduring, a more something more enduring. The United States has been leading international efforts to get more humanitarian assistance to Gaza. Tonight, I'm directing the U.S. military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza that can receive large shipments carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters. No U.S. boots will be on the ground. A temporary pier will enable a massive increase in the amount of humanitarian assistance getting into Gaza every day. <laughs> and Israel must do its part. Israel must allow more aid into Gaza and ensure humanitarian workers aren't caught in the crossfire. And they're announcing they're going to they're going to cross, have a crossing in northern Gaza. I mean, what, why in the world do we need to build a pier or a port to get into Gaza when there are land access points that are easily just drive the trucks in, deliver the trucks in through the land access points? So what is the real motivation of this? Well, there's two things. The first one being, and by the way, look, you've got Israelis blocking humanitarian aid trucks from coming in. So you've got protesters out there not allowing people to get food. They want people to starve, these protesters. You've got the Israelis blocking the access points, leaving the United States to have to drop food literally onto people, crushing them in certain circumstances, and now saying that there's going to be a port that's going to be built. What is the real motivation behind this? Well, again, two reasons. One of them is... This could be a ploy to get the United States into the war. This could be a ploy to get the American people to try to turn on the Palestinians and on Hamas. Because, look, you're going to build a pier. You're going to build a port. You've got the United States heavily funding and on the side of Israel. Obviously, Hamas knows this. Obviously, the Palestinian people know this. So the United States is effectively at war as well with the Palestinian people. So fair game, right? Fair target. Maybe according to Hamas, maybe according to the Palestinians. Now, I'm not sure if Hamas would do this, but certainly putting American troops in harm's way and having an incident happen is the fastest way to get the United States into the war actively. Nothing would please Netanyahu more than to drag the United States into an actual war. And this would also help maybe Biden. He's thinking, well, we can't stop the funding to Israel. We can't seem to cut them off. We, we have to continue on forever because the lobby in the United States is so strong. They own all of the U.S. politicians, right, the, the Israel lobby and the Zionist lobbies. And so they're thinking, well, maybe uh, the American people would turn on the Palestinians if the Americans were also under attack after trying to deliver humanitarian aid. I mean— Look, how many things could possibly go wrong? It just takes one rogue missile, one or a rocket, I should say. The, the Hamas doesn't have missiles. One rogue rocket, one incident that causes American lives to be lost, and suddenly America's in this war. Israel's happy. 
Biden thinks that this would actually turn the American people against the Palestinians. I doubt it would. I think people would see through this. Hard to say. But also, it's just ridiculous to spend a couple of months building a peer report, making this kind of announcement that is just clearly for show because it's just going to take too long to build a peer report, when in reality, you could just, again, do a land crossing. The other reason is natural gas. There is an untapped natural gas field off of the coast of Gaza. I want to play this for you. This is from the BBC. And you kind of get a better idea of maybe why the United States wants to build this pier suddenly rather than use the many different land crossings into Gaza, which would be quick, easy, and could be done right now. You don't need to build anything. It's available, open. (laughs) Watch this. Take a look at this. 20 miles off the coast of the Gaza Strip, there's an untapped natural gas field called the Gaza Marine. This field holds an estimated trillion cubic feet of natural gas, and the U.S. wants to develop it. Amos Hochstein, Biden's energy security advisor, referred to this as an economic revitalization plan for a post-war Gaza Strip, stating that there are companies willing to develop those fields. The United States has a contentious history with foreign resources. During the Iraq War, the U.S. opened the country's fully nationalized oil industry. Today, Iraq is dominated by privatized foreign firms. Remember to follow for more updates. Sorry, and that is not, that was not, um, oops, 20 miles sorry, the here. Of the Gaza Strip. That was not uh, BBC, that's DSD. I'm actually trying to figure out exactly what, let me just kind of look at this, but um, that, uh, I, I said that was BBC earlier and that is not. So anyway, uh, but you get the idea, right, that this is the, this, this port here is, um, you know, you could see here, let me just kind of throw this up here for you so you can see this natural gas field right here off of the coast of Gaza um, is really why the United States might want to build this port. Now, the U.S. claims that the reason why they want to build and develop this natural gas field is because it would then generate income that they could use to rebuild Gaza. But that should be income that's given to the Palestinian people. These the Palestinians are not idiots. They're not They don't need to be catered to like children. They don't need to have other countries controlling their resources. They are perfectly capable, perfectly intelligent, perfectly, uh, they've got science, they've got everything they need in order to build themselves up. So as long as they could get access to the supplies, the biggest problem for the Palestinians is that the Israelis control everything. They control their borders, their airspace, their land, their water, everything. And they're not able to get the supplies needed to develop and to flourish. Everything's been hindered. So if you just give the Palestinians the access to these fields, the access to the materials to even build and develop, then they could do it on their own. They could make the money. They could decide what they want to do with the money. Now, some people say, well, but then Hamas is going to take it. They're going to make billions of dollars and they're not going to give it to the people. Well, maybe, but that happens in every country, including ours. What, what's to say that billionaires, American billionaires uh, or Israeli billionaires aren't going to take the money? And, and keep it from the Palestinian people. It's better to give the money to the Palestinians and let them squabble it out amongst themselves rather than us controlling it or Israel controlling it or anybody else controlling it. But there's a real possibility that the main reason why they want to develop and build and take the time to, to two months, people will be starved. That, that's enough. People will be dead. Why take two months to build a pier when you could cross through right now with all the humanitarian aid you want? The real reason is to probably develop these oil fields. The second reason may be to get us closer into conflict. Something happens to American troops, we're maybe then suddenly thrust into another conflict. So there's, um, you know, just, and a lot of it is just rather than actually doing the right thing, pressuring the Israelis for an actual ceasefire, um, pressuring them to give humanitarian aid, pressuring them to stop their protesters from blocking people from getting food inside of Gaza. Rather than do that, the United States say, oh, we're going to build, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while, but we're going to do it. Here's um, here's uh, Biden also talking about, now at the State of the Union, kind of going hard against Israel, saying that they need to do what they can to protect civilian life. Here he is. Oh. ...hides and operates among the civilian population like cowards under hospitals, daycare centers, and all the like. Israel also has a fundamental responsibility, though, to protect innocent civilians in Gaza. (laughs) 
this war. has taken a greater toll on innocent civilians than all previous wars in Gaza combined. More than 30,000 Palestinians have been killed, most of whom are not Hamas. Thousands and thousands of innocents, women and children, girls and boys, also orphaned. Nearly 2 million more Palestinians under bombardment or displacement. Homes destroyed, neighbors in rubble, cities in ruin, families without food, water, medicine. It's heartbreaking. I've been working nonstop to establish an immediate ceasefire that would last for six weeks to get all the prisoners released, all the hostages released, to get the hostages home and ease the intolerable humanitarian crisis and build toward an enduring, a more something more enduring. I mean, look, a, a six-week ceasefire is not a ceasefire. And Netanyahu has also made this really, really clear that he intends to get the hostages back and then continue the bombardment. This isn't about, oh, if we get the hostages, we'll stop. No, it's we're going to get the hostages. We'll give you six months reprieve, a six weeks reprieve. And then we're coming back and we're going to continue to bomb your children. We're going to come back. We're going to continue to demolish every single aspect of civilian life that you possibly have. We're going to make sure you are miserable. And that's something even more atrocious than Hamas rises up from those ashes because that's exactly what will happen. You don't think people are pissed? You don't think you, you, it, do they really believe that the Palestinians, after having this happen to them, they think, oh, well, I guess we just have to accept our oppression, accept our the death toll, accept all of this, and somehow just live peacefully next to the Israelis while they refuse to allow us basic human rights, while they refuse to allow us equality and true freedom. Like, I guess we just have to accept our fate as oppressed lesser beings. They're not going to accept that. Something else is going to rise up if Hamas is crushed completely. Something else, and it could be very much worse. That's what happened when we went after Al-Qaeda in the Middle East, saying, oh, we got to go after Al-Qaeda, and then what rose from those ashes? ISIS. So it's just, um, the, the frustrating thing is that is that obviously Biden could do a lot more, but he just chooses not to. Obviously, the United States could absolutely do a lot more, completely cut off Israel, and say we're not going to be associated and affiliated with this, but it doesn't. Hey guys, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you like this segment. Now you might be wondering, this seems like it's part of a bigger show. You're right, it is. The full show is at KimIversonShow.com. So what you're watching is just a clip. And if you want to get the full experience, then you got to go to KimIversonShow.com. The show airs Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern at KimIversonShow.com. That is where you can watch the full show. Here, you just get clips. So click on the link down below. Go to the full show. Enjoy. Otherwise, I'll see you next time right here. And be sure, once again, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.